So this evening, updating our momentum portfolio for 2016-2017. My name is Simon Brown from Just One Lap. This is a portfolio which we've now been running uh, 13, 14, 15, so three years and some change. We're going to go through the theory behind it. We'll touch on the returns, uh, some changes to methodology, and then we'll look for the stocks that meet that me methodology and will come into the portfolio. Earlier today, half past four, I sold out of the portfolio as per methodology, went into cash with one exception. Um, and from there, we will now then tomorrow morning in the opening auction go and buy the new stocks that uh, meet the criteria. So the theory behind this is, is fairly simple. Um, I, I discovered it uh, in about uh, 2010, I suppose, uh, and it really takes the theory. It's a strategy that says that trends in the market tend to continue. And, and, and we've got tons of evidence of this. We've got it on the downside with Kumba from 600 Rand to sub 30. And people were saying you know, 400, 300, 200, 100 Rand. They were saying, you can't go lower. Of course it can. The, the flip side is Capitec went from, over a longer period than Kumbo, went from 20 Rand to almost 600 Rand. And again, as it runs, people are, uh, how much higher can it go? Where can it go next? Surely this is the top. Well, good. But the point is, trends do continue. Trends are immensely powerful things within stock markets. Um, and, and I've always been aware of it. I've always been a trend-based trader uh, in my trading space. And then some research came out from Dimsa, Marsh, and, and uh, Staten from the London School of Business, where they looked at the FTSE 100 from 1900 to 2009 using pure momentum strategy, exactly as I use it here just by the winners. And they came out at a 15.3% return a year versus an index that did 4.2%. A couple of issues here. They rebalanced on a monthly basis. Man, that hurts on the cost basis. Um, absolutely, it does. So I, I pulled that back and they hadn't included the costs and the, the dividends. So in truth, if you took dividends into the FTSE return and costs from that 15.3, the outperformance was about 1.6 times versus the index. And that, that's a significant outperformance over a long period. So at that point, I thought, cool, let's delve into this. Let's see how it works. And I did some back testing, um, ran some, some model portfolios and kind of ran it as an aside. You know, I, I had some cash in there, but I wasn't, you know, it was muddled with my other stocks that I owned. And sometimes I would keep a share because I liked it and I thought I want to continue owning it. Um, and then starting in 2013, thought, nope, I don't know, let's get, let's get real about this. Let's make this a proper portfolio. I funded it. I set up a separate portfolios for it. We'll come to those numbers in a moment um, and have been trading it subsequent. We've put 200,000 into it over the years, uh, and we'll talk more about that process in, in a moment. So what we do very simply is we sort stocks by last 12 months total return. Now, we used to do this on calendar year, but the whole you know 31 December, 1 March was not a convenient time to be rebalancing and doing web costs and the like. So we moved it to the tax year. Uh, 1 March to 28, 29 February. And we simply say, what are the best stocks within our, within our benchmark over the previous 12 months? And we buy them. We take into account no fundamental analysis. We take into account no technical analysis aside from the point that we are doing a scan on, on, on the charts. And we will do that in a, in a moment and get that data. So we... we, we, we have no complexity to this process at all, not at all. And then we buy them and we hold them. And, and we hold them for a year. And we absolutely do. And, and, and the important point is, it's that simple. Uh, folks look at it and it's like, no, but surely. Um, no, but surely, no. It, it is really just that simple. I suppose uh, there are a couple of issues. And, and, and so, you know, what's the universe that you choose? And we'll come to that in a moment. Um, what about a stop loss? And so... We'll come to returns in a moment. Certainly in the last year, stop loss would have been a lovely thing. But in truth, if I go back over time, there's no stop loss that actually improves my return. And what I mean by that, so, so, so let me see if I can get a pen up here and let's do some examples. So what I'm saying is the stock goes down, right? And at some point you decide to stop out. Do you stop there? Do you stop there? Where do you stop it? The problem is, and last year, as I said, there were some exceptions to this, but in some cases, it, it, it was 
momentum stock has it lost momentum at some point it probably has and it carries on falling in truth at most points it then starts to move higher it, yes it has that pullback and it moves higher so do you stop loss at five percent ten percent fifteen twenty where do you stop it if you stop at five then it runs again and you fall out so yeah stop loss saved you some blushes but it didn't actually make any significant difference to the returns. In fact, it hindered the returns. And the one example, I'll give you two. So the one year we held NASPAS, I think year before last, um, and NASPAS went down as much as 18% and then rallied up again and ended up being positive for the year. The one year we held Woolies and it went down 24% and then rallied and was positive for the period. And that's the problem. The stop loss does not at any point actually improve performance. So. Yeah, if you've heard me speak, you know, I'm a massive believer in stop loss. Here's my one exception. There is a time when I will stop, a corporate activity. If there's some corporate activity, I may elect to look at that corporate activity and says, for that reason, I'm exiting. But that corporate activity is not going to be falling sales or something like that. It needs to be something real and something significant. As I said, we funded with 200,000 Rand cash. We started with 100,000 uh, in Jan 2013. And then the plan was to add another, you know, to add less than 50% every year. I didn't want to overwhelm it. So a year later, we put in 40,000. Uh, March of last year, we added another 60. And it took the total funding to 200,000. We were running two portfolios, top 40 and mid cap. So it was 50 into each and then 20 into each and 30 into each. So that over time, they were both funded with 100,000 Rand of cash. And that's an important point. This is a, a real cash portfolio. This is, yes, it's a theory, but <clears throat> the point being is if I'm going to subscribe to the theory and talk about the theory and present the theory, well, then, you know, eat, eat your own cooking uh, and, and put your own cash in. It was my plan to add more money this year. Uh, reasons why not, I'll touch on it briefly. I'll come back to it, is that we are actually finally finding partners to, to properly do this portfolio with so that people can you know, copy trade or follow trade it, call it what you will, nice and simple. Um, and with that, I'm then going to need to fund that portfolio uh, with a couple of hundred thousand. So there'll be two and then we'll merge them together in March 2017. I'm trying to remember my dates. So here are the returns. Um, Next lead by conclusion. So total return since inception in January 2013. Uh, top 40 has done 18.7%. That includes all costs. We pay brokerage, everything there. It includes interest we have earned. It includes dividends we have received. It includes no paid letters we have gotten, sold. But short answer, underperformed the benchmark. And there's one critical point. What are we trying to do here? Beat. The benchmark. So yeah, let's look at top 40. Uh, first year, we were back, we were behind by 7%. Second year, great, we were ahead nicely. Uh, this last year to end uh, today, we were behind by 12.1%, which is a massive number. It's a massive number underperform. Um, and quite frankly, we are behind. We're 7% we're, we're behind. You were better off buying Citrix 40. Absolutely, you were. Am I disappointed by that? You bet yeah. I'm here to make money. Let's not kid around. Am I surprised by it? No. Well, so my when I my back testing said to me that typically we tend to beat the market two out of three or three out of four years, um, and then we have an underperform year. Of course, that's never linear. So what we've got here, we've actually beaten the market one out of three years. No, that's not good. That that's simply not good. In truth, it's a it's a short uh, period, three years, quite short. Am I stressing it? No, I don't, I don't want to lose money. That is beer money I don't own. Red wine that I can't buy. But I'm certainly not stressing it. And if you look at the mid cap, again, lead by conclusion. Since inception, 72.7%. Question, are these analyzed returns? Nope, total return from uh, 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 one, 1 Jan. Why did it say year ending? Yeah, from, from 1 Jan running through. So mid cap, 42%. 0.1 versus 9.4, then 44.24.2, and then this year, 15.6 down versus 8.5 down. We were doing very nicely against the uh, uh, the mid cap uh, up until Jan Feb, when frankly the gold stocks and other miners, but particularly gold stocks, totally took off, and we got whipped. Um, we were well ahead. We were nicely in the green. We were nicely in the green. I, 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 no, we we were 
three or four or five percent in the green at the end of December, and the benchmark was down fifteen or eighteen or twenty percent, and things turned around in Jan and Feb. That's going to happen. Point is, we're ahead two out of three years, so we're on track, um, and I'm happy with the mid cap. So the question then is, well, why don't we just do mid cap and not top forty? And, and that's Perhaps not the worst question in the world, but I get to methodology changes in a moment. Short answer, am I comfortable with these returns? Sure. I still have money in it. I'm not pulling the money. Uh, when we when we set up the new process, I will add the, another 200000 into it, um, having then totally put a total of 400000 into it. I'm comfortable. Uh, I'm happy with it. I would have liked top 40 to have done better, but I'm not going to stress that at all. Um, what confused me a moment ago, so we started in Jan 13. So that first column here is for the year ending December 2013. And then we switched. That was when we then switched from calendar to tax year. So Jan, Feb of uh, 14, we were cash only. March 14, we went into the stocks, held them for a year. And then, of course, year ending Feb 16, which is today, 29 Feb. So we're making some changes to methodology. I've been chatting about this. I've put this out there on the Twitters and the Facebooks. I've put it out there in the, in the videos and the webcasts that we have done. And I've got to say, I, I massively appreciate the feedback. Um, we got three types of feedback. Some folks said, whatever you think, uh, love you guys. Uh, some folks said, great idea. You know, we, 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 we understand the whys and the whats and the hows. And then some folks were like, no, don't change it, this, that, and the like. And, and in the end, we changed it. And I'll touch on why in a moment. The bigger picture is, if you don't like the changes I've done, the methodology is out there. It's not a secret. You, you can go and do it, and you can say, no, no, I want to do it the old way. So the old way we did it, we would take the top 40. We would scan for the best stocks. We would buy the top five in the top 40, hold them for a year. We would then scan the mid cap which is 60 stocks. Those are numbers 41 to 100 in terms of market cap on the JSC. We would scan for the returns over a 12-month period, and we would buy the top six. So we would have 11 stocks, five in top 40, six in mid cap. And that's methodology. And if you don't like the changes, as I say, you are more than welcome to take it and to stick to the old system. Why are we changing methodology? Because we look at... So this portfolio started as something I was doing back in the day when I worked at an online broker. It was a way to be invest my money. I never expected to, six years later, be sitting here with a portfolio that has cash in it, um, that has, you know, 100 plus people in the webcast and a video that will become hugely popular if, if previous videos are anything to go by. That was not the expectation. So what are we doing, in a sense, with these methodology changes? We, we are professionalizing the portfolio, if you will, in a word. We're making it more professional. What does that mean? Well, it means making it more CIS compliant, uh, collective investment schemes. You cannot have a collective investment scheme with only five or six or even 11 stocks in it. Um, we are perhaps shifting it towards Regulation 28, which makes it retirement annuity compliant. Now, why all of this? Because things are happening. We, we have got talks ongoing in the next month or two. We will launch some product on Just One Lab, and this will be one of them. Um, we're, there's, there's talk around tax-free savings accounts, perhaps being able to buy individual shares, as, but having the account Regulation 28 compliant, which means we could take the Momentum portfolio and drop it into our tax-free savings account. But it then needs to be Regulation 28 compliant. So... There's a, these changes are, are being done to professionalize the portfolio, as I said. And if you like the way we used to do it and don't want it professionalized, and, and that's not a bad thing. I'm not knocking you. 100% uh, methodologies out there. You go do it on your own. That's perfect. So what are we doing? First thing we're doing is we're going to merge top 40 and mid-cap portfolios. They were separate portfolios. Um, and in fact, initially, it was only top 40. Um, if I go back to 2010, I was only buying, doing it in the top 40 space. Then I started doing it in the mid-cap space. We're going to merge the two portfolios together. So although I funded two portfolios with 100,000 Rand each, after I'd finished my, my sales this afternoon, what I did was I moved the cash from the one account into the other, into the other account. So there's now one momentum portfolio rather than a top 40 and a mid-cap. I'm going to use my 
the top 100 as a benchmark and also my pool of stocks to invest in. Now, you're saying, what's the top 100? Well, good question. It doesn't exist. It will exist. So uh, October last year, the JSC put out a, a request. They put out proposed changes to indices. One of the proposed changes was a top 100 index. Um, they asked for people to give feedback up to and including 15 December, uh, and they were going to make the changes in March. The feedback was such that uh, they have delayed the proposed changes for March. They're engaging the industry more, but we will get a top 100 uh, uh, index. I, I am confident of that. Failing which, I will make it myself, and we can, you know, we can, we can hack it anyway. Um, but there will be a top 100 benchmark, and I quite like the idea of a top 100 as a benchmark. So we scan top 100 shares rather than top 40 and mid cap separately. We scan top 100 as benchmark, and we use that as our pool of stocks. We do the same scan, and I've got the data. I'll do it in a few minutes. We take from 1 March 2015 to 29 February uh, uh, 2016 out of the top 100 and we buy the stocks. Our aim is to beat the benchmark annually. I'm going to come back to that. But what are we going to buy? We're going to buy 15 shares instead of 11. Five must be from the top 40. Five must be from the mid cap. And then the next five, whichever the best are from whichever indices. So we could have 10 from mid cap or 10 from top 40 or a blend of. Why five from top 40 and mid cap? Just to give it some breadth. What concerns me is we end up with 15 stocks or mid cap or 15 stocks or top 40. Now, I might be wrong about this. I, I have given this more thought and more back testing and more thinking and more gray hairs than, than is probably good for my, my myself, particularly at my, my middle age, uh, middle age age is the word I'm looking for. Point being is it does give me a nice blend and certainly the testing suggests. So I aim is simply to beat that benchmark, top 100, on an annual basis and over a three-year rolling period. We typically might not always win on, a, on an annualized basis, but I want to be winning over a three-year period. This will be the methodology going forward as of 1 March 2016. Um, and is this completely Reg 28 compliant? Is this completely CIS compliant? Um, we're going to have to see exactly how those processes come out. Reg 28, I think we still short some stocks. I think Reg 28 might want more than 15 shares, but there's a lot of change happening in this industry. So at the moment, we're certainly in a much better position than we were. There are also issues. I know some folks who couldn't buy or 11 shares last year because they work for one of the companies um, and issues around that. So this will be methodology going forward. Uh, and, and, and certainly this is methodology I'm going to use this evening. So enough banter from me. Let's get to those stocks. So what I need to do is flip over to my software. So I use Amy Brokers, my charting software. <clears throat> What I have done is you can see in the watch lists over here, I have a mid cap watch list, I have a top 40 watch list, um, and that includes that I have to update manually myself, and it's a painful process. But nonetheless, it's easy enough, but it's way simpler. So they're there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, this is Ami Broker, I want yearly returns. I want it up to and including 29 February, I want to filter. So first I filter by top 40. That's cool. And I say, show me the returns. There they are. Uh, now I go and filter on mid cap. Same story. There they are. So here is my universe of stocks. Now remember methodology. We're going to take five from top 40, which is uh, bright, uh, SAB, I delete because we know that SAB is deleting, so I'm not taking SAB. Um, <clears throat> BATS, which is BTI, uh, PSG, and SNH, and Mondi. Which Mondi doesn't really matter. I'm going to take Mondi D, the top one, which is Mondi Limited. So there's my five uh, from that side there. Let me just bring a pen in. Um, and we're up to that point there. Mid cap on this side here, we got Sabanya, SGO. I, ladies and gents, I'm buying a gold stock. Uh, Anglo, uh, Kiro, uh, Sapi, I'm buying a paper stock. Resilient, 
which are already held over. So there are my five stocks on that side there. And then I take the next couple. So Nepi is my next uh, at 28.58, which beats. So anything above 17.4, I take. So I take those three, Nepi, uh, ROC, Rock Castle, GFI, um, and then it starts to get interesting. Uh, I take Raynet at 17.4 versus JSC. So I need total return. I need to go and check dividends here. I'll tell you why. I need to see what the dividend, historic dividend yield is because of that, of course, in, will, will, will have an impact. So what do I need to check dividend yield on? Uh, what is my Raynet dividend yield? Raynet dividend yield is 0 0.61, which is minuscule. So that takes it to call it 18. Um, and my JSC dividend yield. JSC dividend yield is 3.2. So if I add 3.2 to JSC, it gives me 19. So JSC comes in. That's 14 stocks, and then KAP uh, at 16.12. Let me go see what their dividend yield is. COPS dividend yield is 2%. If I add 2 to that, it gives me 18.12. So COP comes in as well, COP or CAP. I can see some questions coming in if this is not making sense. Um, a little better than Sono, Owen, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> a little better than Sono. I'm, I'm taking that as a compliment. Maybe I, sh <laughs> I shouldn't be, but uh, noted. As I said, it's not thrilling TV. It's not TV, is it? Um, so what are my stocks? Uh, we got BAT. We got BTI. We got PSG. Whoops. PSG. We have got SNH, which is Steinhoff. We got MND. Uh, in the mid-cap space, we have SGO. Our ladies and gents, I'm buying gold stocks for the first time in my life. SAP and RES. RES already on. I had it last year. Um, so I did. Ah, hold on, Urban. I'll, I'll check on that in a sec. Um, I already hold resilient. So what I did this afternoon at half past four, I did a quick scan. I was pretty sure resilient would stay in. So I sold, but held on to the rest of them. Um, next five is NEP, is Rock Castle, ROC. I'll check that in a sec. GFI, uh, JSC, and KAP. Um, Capitec at fifteen point six. I see your question. Uh, Capitec, I think, does not have a great dividend yield. It's not the best dividend payer. So Capitec dividend yield one point seven. And if I add one point seven to Capitec, it gives me seventeen point four, which does not. Sorry, 17.3 does not push it up. Bitvest, no chance. I mean, if you run, ooh, Vodacom, Vodacom. Uh, VOD, let's check my Vodacom dividend yield. Because here is a chunky dividend yield. 4.44, I must say, I expected a higher dividend yield from Vodacom. But if I add 4.44 to that, I get to 15 and change. Still not enough. Am I right on that? I'm just double checking myself. Yes, I am right on that. NASPAS Fortress. Fortress Bees might have a good dividend yield. Uh, that's because they don't call it a dividend. Call it 135 cents. Didn't want to do that. 135 cents adds about, it's a surprisingly small dividend yield. 135 cent dividend from Rock Castle into a 33 Rand adds about 3% yield to that. Uh, that's not going to help uh, 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 them at all. Intuit, no. Sassel, no. Uh, Afrox, pick and pay. Oceana, no. Cool. So, them are the, 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 the stocks. So, those are the 15 shares. 
tomorrow I go buy them. I buy them in each question coming through. How do I feel about buying gold stocks? Honest, not happy. But you know what? This is a mechanical system. Uh, it's not for me to decide what's what. What you will see, top 40 best five, apart from PSG, those are all now largely offshore stocks. I know, Mondi, it's African, but it's not. Uh, uh, you know, back, BTR. Mid caps, we've got uh, some gold stocks kicking in. Kura, I'm buying Kura, man. I just dissed Kura. Um, and then Nepi, Rock, GFI, JSC, and Cap. Jade, you're saying a longer time frame for choice? So, yeah, I mean, I, I played with time frames. I've looked at one year, two year, three year. Uh, looked at even five year. And I, I didn't do this this year. I did it in previous uh, years when I've back tested. Longer time frames didn't play out as much. I looked at shorter time frames. And ABSA does a a momentum um, ETF. Uh, NFE MON will be the code, or maybe it's MON NFE. Um, and they do it over a three month period. And they're getting a bit cool. To me, Three months is not a trend. You, I, 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 to me, so I've done, I've tried three, six, nine, 12 months. I've done 12, 24, 36, and I, if I recall correctly, I did 60 months as well, looking at different time frames. Uh, and it just constantly came back and it said a year seems to work. Uh, sales from last year, so Peter, they've all gone out, if I'm understanding your correction, your, your, your question correctly. Those sales have all just gone out. I exited them this afternoon. One exception was resilient. So I sold down resilient because I figured I needed about a 17,000 rand holding. As I was exiting this afternoon, I knew I, I went and did a quick check and I saw that resilient would be staying in. Um, so I kept resilient but i didn't keep them all i sold about half so I, what i did was basically go and see right resilient looks like it's certain to stay um what will my portfolio balance be how much do i want to be holding of resilient came out at seventeen thousand and some change um and therefore i went off and and sold resilient down to what is now seventeen thousand one hundred total value so that worked absolutely so a quick review uh trends momentum continue longer than we think there are two risks to momentum one, sideways market. That's what happened this year, or the last couple, the last year. But there's an extra risk to that when if all the money goes somewhere else. So the, my, my risk has been, and I've said it in the previous years, one day everyone goes for resources, and I'm not in resources. Now that happened in the in the mid cap space. It happened to gold stocks in particular. But that's exactly what happened. Everyone rushed off into resources. It meant my benchmark went up, my stocks went down, and that's going to happen. You know, the, there is no system that wins every single year. What you want to do is win more than most. So as I said, we buy the winners over the 12 months. We hold for a year. Um, and the key point, the change is we merge top 40 and mid cap into top 100. And we buy the top 15. Uh, Lavoya, you're asking, is it wise to have Cure in this portfolio, even though you have exposure to PSG? It's a great question. Um I thought you were going to say, is it wise to have it because they're expensive? Because I wrote an article this morning for Finweek saying that I think they're approximately three times overpriced. Um, I, I'm not stressed by it. I'll tell you why. Because I think that that cross-holding is, is relatively small. Uh, Kira makes up a small slice of PSG. They've also obviously got Zeta. Uh, they've got Capitec, which is the giant holding. Um, they've got PSG Consult, and then they've got a, a little bit of unlisted at the same time. So I, I, I hear you. I, I agree with your concern. I think it's a great point. Um, and I'll be honest, I hadn't uh, uh, so I don't hold subsidiaries directly, or pyramid schemes. You know, I wouldn't take pick and pay and pick quick. But in this case, I think it's suitably small enough to not stress me. Uh, yeah, Clive, if you can bring your questions back. Uh, your system didn't crash. I crashed it, my fault. Uh, put your comments back in. We've certainly got some time for some more questions. Urban, uh, not afraid of keeping local stocks due to downgrading. Yeah, look, Urban, I mean, if, if you, you know, I've been talking for a while now about uh, moving away from SA Inc. stocks. And if we go to those stocks, um, what are my SA Inc.? So my SA Inc. is COP, JSC, um, Cura. The other SA Inc.s, I mean, those two are gold miners, they're not SA Inc.s. PSG are my real, real SA Inc.s. Um, not overly stressing me. I mean, I, would I rather not have SA Inc.s here? Yeah, sure. But then, 
maybe the the rand strength strengthens against the pound and everything else, and suddenly the offshores aren't looking so great either. So um, I, 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 you know, I, the system does as it does, and and I just take it and hold it. Erwin, uh, yeah, uh, PSG, COH, uh, SAP, CAP. So, yeah, so you, you, your point is that a couple of them are on their way down last two months trend graph. I agree with you. Uh, the CAP, I saw a chart today. It looks like the, there's a bear flag. It looks like it's going to break lower. So in the past, I've looked at it. I remember the, the first year Brait came onto the onto the list. It was about 40 bucks that year. Um, and of all the stocks, it was the one that was in a short-term downtrend. It was looking weak. Um, and then it just kind of went boom and went insane. So here's the point. Are those perhaps the losers for the year? Sure. Will they revert back to their uptrends? Maybe. Will those downtrends continue? Maybe. But what I'm doing here is keeping it really, really simple. Uh, Hannes, if you want to start with 40,000. So the trick with 40,000, it depends on your broker and minimum costs. If you're doing something like easy equities with no minimums and fractional shares, absolutely not a problem. And you know what? If you haven't got the account and it takes you a day or two to set it up, I wouldn't stress that. A day or two is not going to change the world. It's absolutely not going to change the world. So I wouldn't stress it. Uh, they're nice and cheap. It will work efficiently there. Um, yeah, so Clive, you're buying from the list, but only in your normal technical signals. I, I hear you 100%. So what you're doing is you're saying, cool, we start with a pool of 100. We take this methodology, it narrows it down to 15. Now you're going to wait for your technical signals. Absolutely. And it's an important point, which you're alluding to, which I'm going to make, which is, there, there are many ways to 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 put money into the market, and don't for a second say that this is, think that this is the best and the only. This is one way, and if you want to tweak it, if you want to, as some comments have been, you know, some of these stocks are on downtrends, then, then 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 don't take those ones until they do. If you're going to wait for for signals that you know that you prefer, absolutely. I mean, there's there's many ways to skin this cat. Are you going to get better or worse returns? Time will tell. Um, if they're better. You owe me a glass of wine. <laughs> uh, Bevan, can this system run with ETFs? Yes, it can. I have tested it with ETFs. There should be a video if you look for tax-free savings momentum, because um, what I'm trying to do is put this into a tax-free savings account. The point is tax-free savings. So tomorrow we put another 30 in. We've only got 60,000. I'm waiting for that to get up to 100,000 or so. So we'll hit that next year. But it can work on anything. It can work local. I'm looking at doing it with some international ETFs. Um, so absolutely it can. Alan, any thoughts uh, to do a value portfolio? So in truth, I mean, a, a mechanical value portfolio, we could go back to to uh, Benjamin Graham and Dobbs. And I've, there's a video on that as well. If you go search uh, value investing, go search Benjamin Graham on just one lap and you'll find the video. And he's got a methodology, and if you run that filter via the JSC, number of shares that come out, zero. Absolutely none of them. So I would then need to design a, a value system, probably beyond my skills. If we step back, am I a value investor? Nah, I'm a growth at reasonable price. So I want the growth stocks at great prices. I, and I'm not one of the folks who say value is dead. No, I'm just one of the folks who say value is not in favor at the moment. It will come back. Um, so short answer, any thoughts to do a value portfolio? I suppose the short answer is no. Nah. Lavoie, I'm tempted at adding Discovery to my momentum stocks. Uh, would you think it's wise? So Discovery didn't pop up on the list. And if we have a look at where Discovery is in the list, I think it's quite far down. Uh, Discovery was down 4.8%. It's about halfway down the list for the year. Um, it's certainly not showing momentum in a strong sense. Uh, Avi, so I hear what you're saying there. What you're saying is there's two gold stocks. In fact, there are three. Well, Sabanya. So Sabanya's gold uh, with some platinum coming along, Anglo and then Goldfield. Uh, would you suggest just one of them? So one could. I've also got two paper stocks, although they're fairly different in, in, in many senses. I have in the past had, last year we had two banks, Capitec and First Rand. So for me, no, I'm going to buy both. Um, it does mean I'm going to have a fairly high exposure, three out of 15, that's a 20% exposure to gold stocks. That's a lot. I mean, you know, I'm the man who has said that the only time I have bought a gold share is 
uh, when I was closing a short. And, and that is true over 20 years of trading, 21 years of trading. But it's in, it's as the rules say, um, it, it comes to, as I said, and I've said this a bunch of times this evening, we can tweak, we can play around, we can change things. I'm, I, I keep it as simple as possible. Um, but that's not to say that you can't. The trick is, so let's say two gold stocks. Sabanya, so let's call them partly quasi-platinum. Oh, sorry, my mouse keeps doing that. Anglo Gold, Ashanti, and Goldfields. Sure as Murphy is watching, if I buy one, the other one does better. I just know that. That's just how it works. So I say thanks, but no. Ladies and gents, we are hitting up against our time. Uh, apologies for me crashing the system. I didn't realize I could actually get back into the system. Um, I'm going to burn everything I can at both ends of all things. I'm going to get this video online uh, this evening. I'm going to try and do it in the next two hours. I can't promise that, but I can promise it will be there before you wake up, unless you wake up sort of by 11. Um, but I should be able to get it up around 9 or 10. It will be on the justonelap.com website. The email will get automatically sent to you in the next couple couple of hours and as I said uh, if you if you're up and about and you got looking for something to do tomorrow morning you can watch me scrambling to buy the shares uh, 14 of them because resilient I already own um, Irvin really appreciate thanks very much ladies and gents I hope you have a great evening further um, all the best